Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklet Educational Channel. So this is part two for the previous year's questions of ARS NET examination for the environmental science paper and we are going to discuss all the questions in very detail and we will prepare ourselves for the examination and what questions can come. So without much delay, let's get started. So I request you if you haven't checked the previous parts in this series, you can check the link provided in the i button and how to prepare, what is the syllabus, so that it will be helpful in the examination. So today's first question is taken from the ARS NET 2012 examination and the question was, the carbon dioxide concentration before the beginning of the industrial revolution was of how much quantity? And here, the correct option will be option number D, yes. 280 ppm that is parts per million was the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere before the industrial revolution. So you should also know the questions which can come that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have been measured continuously since 1958 at the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii, USA. So questions have also come which organization is measuring the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the environmental science entrances and you should also know that what is the current ppm that is the current concentration of carbon dioxide level in our atmosphere so it is 415 ppm as per the 2021 report and this report was also given by the Mauna Loa observatory so here the second thing you should know that the methane which is the second most important greenhouse gas has risen from the pre-industrial level of its 720 parts per billion. So here 722 it is not ppm it is parts per billion and now at present that is 2019 report the ppb of methane is 1866. So these are also important this can be also asked because it is one of the second most important greenhouse gas and this graph shows that how the Mauna Loa observatory measures the carbon dioxide level in our atmosphere since 1958 and you can see it is a rapid increase in the concentration where the y-axis is measuring the carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million and the x-axis shows the gradual years. So it is important kindly note down these values. Let's move to the second question. So the next question was again asked in the ARS NET 2012 examination. The question was very simple. So before discussing this question, I would like to say that I have asked several students who have already appeared in the ARS NET environmental science paper and their suggestion was that the questions are from very very basic level. So you, if you are clear with the basic things, basic NET environmental science syllabus, if you are preparing then it will be very easy. But the thing is there is negative marking so you should be aware of that and you should attend attentively. So coming to this question, this is very easy question you should be able to answer that what is the boundary between troposphere and stratosphere called. I will wait for certain seconds then I will reveal the answer. And here the correct option will be option number D none of the above. Yes if your concept is clear you can say that ionosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere they do not come in between troposphere and stratosphere but there is a layer in between troposphere and stratosphere you should know so we'll discuss these things in this video because they are very very frequent asked questions in the examination. So here comes the slide when we will know and you all should note down all these important characteristics. I am repeating please note down all these things. From moving from earth towards the sky the first layer is troposphere followed by the stratosphere. So troposphere and stratosphere they are having an intermediate layer which is called as tropopause which is 12 km above the earth's surface which is in terms of 7 miles. Then when we are moving from stratosphere to mesosphere, there is a layer called as stratopause. Similarly, from mesosphere to thermosphere, when we are moving, there is a layer called as mesopause. And similarly, thermosphere and exosphere are having an intermediate layer called as thermopause. So these are very important and I have made a video how to remember this atmospheric layer with a trick that is very very simple and you should look into that. I will provide it in the i button because surely a question will be there from the atmospheric layers. So here now we will talk about the ionosphere region or ionosphere zone of the atmosphere. Why? Because this layer is also very important to know 
which lies mostly in the thermosphere region and it is a region that includes most part of the thermosphere and also some parts of the mesosphere and exosphere so why we will tell that it is consisting of mesosphere and exosphere some parts because the density changes from day to night yes what is the density and all we'll know because this ionosphere from the word you will guess that it is made up of ions so it is made up of ions that are electrically charged gas particles so it is important they are electrically charged gas particles from where they are coming they are existing due to the radiation coming from the sun striking the atmosphere so i will tell you very easy so the sun rays when they are striking here they are forming the ionized particles of gas which are electrically charged which are mostly concentrated in the thermosphere region and in some parts of mesosphere and also exosphere but in the question if it is asked to select one option you should select that ionosphere lies majorly in the thermosphere region and one more important thing you should also know that this ionosphere is divided into three layers d layer e layer and f layer so no need to go deep inside that but you should know that there are three layers of ionosphere these are d e and f layer and one more thing is that why this density of electrical charge gas changes because the density is depending upon the sun's energy and sun's energy is maximum during the daytime so there is more dense this ionosphere during the daytime as compared to the night time because the sun's energy radiation is not reaching the atmosphere in that quantity at night so i hope you are clear with this till now we have got an idea that the questions are very basic and now we will do some of the basic questions related to these atmospheric layers so they are very easy and you should note down all these things also we can be having this as a rapid revision so the first question is what is the most abundant element in the earth atmosphere and here the correct option everybody will be knowing that nitrogen constitutes about 78 percent in the earth atmosphere followed by the oxygen that is around 21 percentage चलते हैं हमारे अगले क्वेश्चन की तरफ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज द करेक्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ अर्थ एटमोस्फेरिक लेयर्स फ्रॉम बॉटम टू टॉप सो आंसर आई हैव ऑलरेडी मार्क्ड हियर सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी द फाइनल वन दैट द फोर्थ वन ट्रोपोस्फेयर स्टेटोस्फेयर मीजोस्फेयर थर्मोस्फेयर एंड एक्जोस्फेयर सो यू शुड ऑलवेज मार्क दैट इट इज टेलिंग हियर फ्रॉम बॉटम टू टॉप सो इफ यू डब गिवन फ्रॉम टॉप टू बॉटम देयर विल बी द डिफरेंट सीक्वेंस सो द ऑपोजिट ऑफ दिस वन नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन which layer of the atmosphere has the highest density of gas molecules so here the layer will be troposphere region having the highest density of gas molecules but if it would have asked that highest concentration of the ionized molecules then you can select the thermosphere region let's move to the next slide so here some of the other basic questions so this question is asking which layer of the atmosphere contains the ozone layer and here the correct option will be stratosphere is having the ozone layer and you can also say that in troposphere also ozone are present but if it is asking only one option stratosphere is having the ozone layer but ozone are concentrated in the troposphere which are bad ozone and in stratosphere they are good ozone protecting us so next question is in which layer do virtually all weather phenomena take place so all the weather phenomena that take place in troposphere region of the atmosphere similarly one more important and interesting question in which layers do auroras so auroras are also called as the northern lights where they occur they occur in the thermosphere region of the atmosphere so i hope you are noting down all these things next slide the question is which two atmospheric layers have temperature profiles that promote convection so you must be knowing convection and conduction all these things the phenomena so convection is taking place in the mesosphere and troposphere region of the atmosphere time for the next question next question is what frequency of electromagnetic radiation are absorbed by the earth's ozone layer so this is very easy question the question answer will be ultraviolet rays are absorbed by the earth's ozone layer situated in the stratosphere chalte hain hamare agle question ki taraf next question is what frequencies of electromagnetic radiation are most abundantly emitted by the sun so this is telling that the sun ray is emitting the electromagnetic rays and which is having the most abundant electromagnetic radiation emitted by the sun 
correct option will be infrared light so we will know about the solar energy distribution because this is also one of the frequently asked questions in the environmental science entrances so this graph shows the solar energy distribution the total amount of electromagnetic radiation coming from the solar rays that is consisting of around 52 percent near infrared and what is the wavelength the wavelength is from 700 to 2500 nanometer which is of near infrared region coming to the next abundant rays coming from the solar radiation that is 43 percent is visible rays that is having the wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometer which is visible to our eyes next five percent constitutes ultraviolet rays in the wavelength region of 300 to 400 nanometers so this is also important the percentage along with the kind of electromagnetic radiation and with their wavelengths let's move to the next slide the next question is what frequency of the electromagnetic radiation are most abundantly emitted by the earth so previously we discussed what is emitted by the sun and this is telling about what is abundantly emitted by the earth's surface so same answer infrared light are having the most abundantly emitted form by the earth's surface coming to the next question what frequencies of electromagnetic radiation are absorbed by the gases in the troposphere region so here also the answer will be infrared lights are the electromagnetic radiation absorbed by the gases which are present in the troposphere region of the earth and the next question is what instrument is used to measure the air pressure and here very easy barometer will be the correct option so here these were some of the related questions which can come in the next examination of ARS net so we have discussed this I hope you have written down all this in your notes and stay tuned for the next part and you can also go through all the playlist of net environmental science because the syllabus is almost same and you can prepare accordingly with the help of MCQs and unit wise preparation of net syllabus so see you guys in our next video till then keep preparing and believe in yourself.